Yes. The permanent secretary and the uh, deputy secretary and all the senior management and all the staff. Bolovinaka. Please, you're all very quiet. You know, I'm a very informal person, so this is like a... I'm a bit like you, but first of all, I must say thank you to all of you. Thank you for the traditional welcome um, that has been arranged for me on behalf of the ministry. Um, there's something that, that I, I should say first before I even go on to a little speech. The Deputy Secretary and the Permanent Secretary and quite a few members of the staff were just involved with the Chinese delegation that we're here with respect to GIS. And uh, the Deputy Secretary said a prayer. And in that prayer, something stood out for me, uh, which I hope you can, I'm going to share with you, which I hope is going to be the message for all of us at MITT and Lands and Mineral Resources. And it's just one word, and he prayed for unity. And I thank you, Deputy Secretary, for reminding us all that that is the only way that this particular ministry, it is going to be a large ministry, but it's the only way that this ministry will work. It's the only way this ministry will move forward in terms of what government's vision is. And I think all of us should remember that. Although it says Ministry of Industry, Trade and Tourism and Lands and Mineral Resources, there's a great deal of unity that exists in the ideas and the development plans and all that is necessary with respect to government amongst all the ministries. I hope and pray that I can serve you well. I said that this informally to, uh, at headquarters that one of the biggest things for me is I'm a very down-to-earth grassroots person. I will climb the hills with the surveys if I necessarily have to. See, that's the truth. <laughs> and, uh, and I will defend you to the fullest in Parliament because I do not want one complaint against this particular ministry to ever arise again. I've been a part of the private sector where I've, I've had people say numerous things about the, the Ministry for Lands and Mineral Resources. They don't realize way, the kind of hard work that you do. They don't realize how hard it is to get to a particular stage in terms of consent, in terms of everything that we do in, in this particular ministry. They don't realize it and they blame you people for a lot of things. But I don't think that's necessary. I think the first meeting that we went to, um, Director Lenz was present, PS was present. And I'll say this, I'm very open about it. The Fiji Roads Authority decided to point a finger and I had not met anybody. Decided to point the finger at us. Well, I stood up and I made sure that they were told off about not pointing a finger to us because we were not responsible and neither were we at fault. And just uh, on the lighter side, I suddenly realized Director Lens put his chest out. <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, there is a vision that government has with respect to uh, development, our economic base that we need to grow, all our resources that we have at lands and mineral resources. But one of the main things that we must remember and we must, must put at the forefront of our mind is that everything we do must be done in a sustainable manner. We are a small country. We're only not even a million people. But what we have, we must treasure. And what we do, we must always remember that it has to be done in a sustainable manner. There will be a great deal of synergy that exists between the industry, trade and tourism and our departments because industry, trade, tourism looks after investment. It looks after tourism, which brings us about $1.6 billion a year. The Lands Ministry and the Mineral Resources Ministry, there are issues that are currently very hot potatoes with respect to the rest of Fiji, respect to coming up in Parliament, and one, some of those I will raise with you today that require our urgent and immediate attention. Minister Muniwanga happens to be a very good friend of mine, and she has done a tremendous job so far. We need to carry that same vein across and make sure that we even do better now and we deliver. One of the most important things that the Prime Minister tells us all is that you must deliver. And delivery means delivering on time. There is this SOP that was put on my desk, and it's about that thick. And I thought to myself, thank you, PS. I have to read that in four hours. But, um, but there are timelines that have been put on it. And I said this before to the other departments. 
There's a reason why these things are, are there, for us to ensure that we are efficient. I can only give you an example of what has happened. I'm not saying that MITT is better than anybody, but I can only give you an example of what happens at MITT. MITT is like you guys, they're all very young. They're all very passionate. And they work till ungodly hours in the morning to ensure that they deliver. I'm going to ask you to remember that. Because I will ask of you to, to do only that which I will do myself. I will work till four in the morning because I love my country. I will work till four in the morning because I have to deliver to that particular person who pays my wages and yours. You must be committed and must be passionate about the work that you undertake and the work that you do and you must deliver. There's nothing else that matters. I don't care which political party you belong to. I don't care what, what you do at the end of the day outside of work hours. But you are getting paid by the ordinary Fijian citizen. So am I. If I have to work till four in the morning, I chose to become a politician. Obviously the Prime Minister had the faith. He chose for us to become ministers. And I have to perform. And I am only as good as you are. I can't emphasize that enough to you. I'm only as good as you are. I will stand up in Parliament and defend every single one of you, from the drivers to the permanent secretary. I will share a bowl of grog with from everybody, from the drivers to the permanent secretary. My number for all of you here today is, please note it down, is 9908797. Anytime that you need anything done, if you can't get a hold of any permanent secretary, I'm always there, I always will be there at the end of the day. I'm very committed to what I do. I'm very proud to have been asked to do this job as Minister for Lands and Mineral Resources. And there are, I've spoken, spoken to the Permanent Secretary about this, <clears throat> there are certain things that we need to put in order of priority. And some of the main issues I think that, that creep up specifically out of uh, the mineral resources is the formula that we need to uh, finish off, Pierce, correct? With respect to the royalties that need to be done. I, I don't know whether this is God-given or not, but I certainly feel that it is. I have a great radar, and I feel that there are going to be a whole host of questions being asked in Parliament about this particular thing. So for those people that are responsible, it requires your urgent attention to ensure that it is done in a timely and swiftly manner so that I can stand up in Parliament and make sure I tell the general public and Parliament that this is done. This is us talking about the fair share of resources to our own people. We cannot, we must not delay the formula as to how we do it. That's just one example that we do. And in terms of the synergy, you must realize that Fiji is a choice destination in terms of tourism. Fiji is now a choice destination in terms of investment. And sometimes the investment is quite substantial amounts. An example I can use is just recently we did the groundbreaking ceremony on a $500 million resort complex in Kumabe. That is quite a substantial feat for us to actually attract that kind of investment. And it's not just MITT that does it, it's you guys that are involved that have to do the necessary information, information, information. Three words you should remember, together with location, location, location. These things are vital for me to go, whenever we, please, we go offshore to sell Fiji as a destination for investment and for tourism purposes, information is so vital for me to portray to them to say that we are able to do this, you can get this, you can get that, you can't do this, we have mineral resources, we have our foreshore leases, this, that, that, that and everything else. Otherwise it doesn't work. That's why I started off with the message of unity. You must at all times work with MITT and uh, your head office at, at, at LANS to ensure that the right information is received. We make sure that we capitalize on, the, uh, on what we do here in Fiji. So that when we do go and sell Fiji offshore, you know, you must have heard the Prime Minister say Fiji is open for business. Open for business means we need to attract foreign investment. And part of, part of that, a major part of that, is you guys. I have just said this earlier on also about the geospatial unit. You know, some, of, some people don't realize how important a unit that is in the ministry along with mineral resources. It is phenomenally important to be able to gather, collect, get all the information 
we can in order for us to be able to say that we are a wonderful destination. Just to tell you a little bit about the, the, the development plans that we have, there's a tourism development plan that needs to happen. I've just mentioned something to, to Pierce also, which is in the pipeline. Again, there's a great deal of synergy between our ministry and the Ministry of Agriculture. Mr. Seratu happens to be one of my best friends. We've dreamt up a great thing that we can do for Fiji, and that's about organics, doing things in an organic fashion, like organic farms, etc. At the end result of all of that is our own people can make a great deal out of, of money out of doing things in an organic fashion. Now, with respect to the Ministry of Lands, we haven't, I don't think, embarked upon that to see which lands we can actually certify as organic when we do go across offshore to say that this is an organic piece of land, it's 100 acres, it fetches more premium for us. I'm just giving you small little examples just to show you where we are in terms of where we want to go to with respect to development. You know, the mineral resources too. We, we may not be resource rich like the Papua New Guineans, but we do have some available that, and actually, that can actually change our GDP. You must, whilst you're at work, bear in mind <coughs> that you're answerable to someone. I always look, wake up in the morning, and I wear this. There's not, I don't wear this for show. I pick it up every morning and I put it on, and this is who I work for. I'm not a boss, I work for someone. I work for the Fijian citizen at the end of the day. You should all remember that. If I don't wear this by mistake one day, I got a growling from PM. The people may not see it, but I do. Everybody, he will spot you a mile away if you're not wearing one. So I urge you all in the morning when you get up, find yourself one of these, put it on, and remember, you work for the ordinary Fijian. You should be inspired that they've, you know, you, you're sitting in a job in government where you're actually going to make a difference. There are a couple of crucial ministries that are around that make a difference. And I generally feel that this is one of the major ministries that is going to take us forward to the development plans that we want to uh, we want to be uh, in the next 20, 20, 20 odd years or so. You know, we in government we don't we're not actually looking at okay, five years from now we should be here. We're looking at not just being one of the best in the Pacific Island uh, nations. We're looking at being the best, one of the best or comparable to those in South, uh, Southeast Asia. We're looking at improving our standards. We're looking at being able to provide information at the highest level that you can to anybody who wishes to come and invest in Fiji. We're looking at, I, I just, you know, I realized last, uh, last night after sharing a ball of growth with the, with the surveyors that they're so, they're not well equipped and I'm not sure what happened. They're not even equipped enough to be uh, dealing with issues of safety. We cannot afford to do that. So the reason why I'm telling you that is so that you realize that if you have an issue, at whatever department, and you think we are deficient, you have to tell me. So I can do something about it in terms of budget time to get enough money to do it. Or I can do something about it when we do ask for assistance from other countries. I need to have that information in my head. So that at any given time, any country says, is there anything that we'd like assistance with? I know across the board that it's mineral you know, resources that need this or that or anything else. But I must urge, urge you all, please remember, I'm a very committed minister. Yes, I do ride motorcycles. I think, are they here? Yes. So I'm here? No? I know some of the guys out in the field are scared to ride it. Come and see me. I'll help you learn. But uh, I work hard. And as I said, I work hard for a reason, because I love my country. And I love my people, and I love my country. And I hope that message goes across to all of you, okay? And uh, I'm very committed to, to, to what the development plans are, very committed to what the Prime Minister has directed us to do. And working till 2 or 3 in the morning is not an issue for me at all. I'm going to ask some of you, at times you'll be asked to work quite late hours so that we don't have backlogs, so we don't have issues really want to make sure that we become one of the most efficient ministries around. And with those few words, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not going to stand here and talk for an hour or two, but I won't. I humbly, humbly, humbly say thank you. Thank you very much for the lovely traditional welcome. And I look forward to working with all of you. And may God bless all of you and God bless our country. Thank you.